Judgment Day and the end of the world is all in our minds. And our minds are a dangerous place to be. Hey, hey, remember when everyone said that the world would end in 2012 and they made a movie about it and everything and everyone was saying there would be cataclysmic events like massive fires, World War III, plagues of locusts, floods and mass civil unrest leading to complete shutdown of all of society? Welcome to 2020. Yeah, so uh, funny story. While we all know that didn't happen in 2012, cause we're all obviously still here, almost every prediction people made about how the world would end back then is pretty much coming true this year in 2020. Wildfires exploded across Australia at the tail end of 2019 and were strongest in January. World War III, after the assassination of Iranian general Qasem Soleimani, tensions between the US and Iran were at an all time high with attacks on the US embassy in Baghdad, sparking fears the next world war could happen very soon. Swarms of locusts eating thousands of crops and causing famine? That was February in Kenya. Flooding? March in the UK. Civil unrest and anarchy in the streets? Mark another one off for apocalypse bingo. I'm still wondering if we're gonna get a hoaxed alien attack this year. You really would be forgiven for thinking that the Maya just got the math wrong on their calendar. Maybe the stonemason just had too much peyote that day, who knows? But believe it or not, there's actually a conspiracy about this going around, that our current year 2020 is actually 2012. And it all has to do with the time that we adopted the Gregorian calendar, as opposed to the older Julian one. Now, before we start, let's just say, there are a few big issues with this theory, the least of which is that different parts of the world adopted the Gregorian calendar at different times. So it wasn't just a universal thing that you can just calculate the math on and bang, you've got yourself a day to lock yourself in your doomsday bunker with your mask and your Kool-Aid, but we'll get there soon. So what is this whole thing about? Well, recently a man named Paolo Tagalaguen, who claims to be a researcher and Fulbright scholar, took to Twitter in a now deleted post that he claimed was a joke and did some rather questionable math and came up with a theory that basically said, we are technically in 2012. The number of days lost in a year due to the shift into the Gregorian calendar is 11 days. For 268 years using the Gregorian calendar, 1752 to 2020 times 11 days, 2,948 days divided by 365 days per year equals eight years, which according to him puts Apocalypse 2 Nibiru Boogaloo on the 21st of June, 2020. Now at the time of recording this, it's July. So that obviously didn't happen. And as we said earlier, there are a few issues with his calculations that proved him wrong. To start with, let's get some background info. The Gregorian calendar is essentially the most widely used calendar and dating system in the world today. It splits the canonical year into 12 months and spaces leap years to make the average year 365.2 days long, focusing predominantly on Earth's revolutions around the sun as a means of keeping time. If you live in the world today, chances are you at least know this dating system. It was invented by Pope Gregory XIII and gradually replaced the much older Julian calendar that was used at that time, an event which some people say gave us April Fool's Day. See, aside from Christian influences, like changing how the lunar cycles were calculated by the church to get a more accurate date for Easter and the date of the new year, the Gregorian calendar also shortened the average year by 0 0.0075 days to stop the drift of the calendar with respect to the equinoxes. The Julian calendar though, was proposed by Julius Caesar around 46 BC and was invented with the help of Greek mathematics and astronomy and had been used up until about 1582. This is where we see the first issue with Tagalogun's theory. Not only does it not take into account the leap years, but the date he used for its adoption, 1752, is only the date that the new calendar was adopted in Britain and its colonies, otherwise known as the area of the United States, east of the Appalachian mountains. Much of Europe, including a lot of Catholic countries, such as France, Spain, Lithuania, and much of the not so Holy Roman Empire had adopted it right from the start though, in 1582. In fact, some of the first records at the time show a funny glitch in the dates where Thursday, the 4th of October, 1582, was immediately followed by Friday, the 15th of October, 1582, the next day. Seriously, and this is a real thing today in all of our calendars. Go on any calendar app and check it out for yourself. It's pretty funny. Arguments between Protestant Christians and Catholics though, led to a delay in the calendar taking off in the rest of the world, with some countries not even changing until the 18th century, which meant that they had to observe an additional leap year, which is where we get the 11 extra days from. The French and Spanish colonies in the US actually adopted the change when their home countries did in the 1500s. So in short, the math is quite wrong. The other thing to consider is that the whole 2012 phenomenon was a huge misunderstanding. 
We've covered this on the channel before, episode 16. But in a nutshell, the world was never going to end. At least not in the sense of the movie cataclysms or anything. See, the calendar would actually reset at the end of the 13th Baktun, rather than end all life on earth entirely. If anything, think of the Mayan calendar like a car's mileage counter. Once it reaches 999999, it just resets to zero or one since we can't have a year zero. The thing about the Maya though is that they loved their cycles. They thought everything was a cycle, which if you've seen our episode called Cycles and Sine Waves or ever read any of the Hermetic writings, it makes sense to think that most things naturally move in waves. Cycles appear to be built into the fabric of the cosmos. In Mesoamerican mythology, even the world itself went through four creations and recreations before the gods got it right. Something about raining jaguars or giant floods kept messing everything up. And Lil, what have you got to say for yourself? Anyways, my point is, did the Mayan calendar end on December 21st, 2012? Yeah, technically, but they didn't see it as an ending. Once the Baktun reached its end, it would simply transition into a new phase and trigger a kind of rebirth for all of our culture the beginning of a new massive cycle of time. A lot of new age beliefs saw this rebirth as a dawning of a new age of consciousness where people would go through a period of great transition leading to an overall higher consciousness for all of humanity. And we would eventually move into a new heart-centered age. And this was the beginning of that shift. So this time we're in now, would this have been that shift that the Maya thought were so wicked cool? Well, yeah, you bet the biggest period endings they experienced were Baktun endings. So it was a pretty big deal, just not a world ending huge kind of deal. Well, maybe, it depends on how we describe it. Is it the end of our old way of life as we know it? Yeah, we could probably say that. Given our current climate in 2020, it's easy to look for energetic or spiritual excuses for everything that's happening. And maybe there is something to be said about how we can account for time and the energy coming back around to clear out old ways and paradigms before we can move into a new one. It's interesting to see that almost everything we thought would happen in 2012 is happening now, almost like we didn't learn the first time around. So we're repeating the energy until we finally break through and change for the better. You might be wondering why a crazy theory like this took off so quickly though, despite its questionable math. And well, part of it actually lies in astrology. We've covered the astrology of coronavirus earlier in another video. So definitely go have a check on that for some other relevant planetary gossip. But the thing is, astrologers have been hyping up 2020 as a year of radical change for many years now, thanks to the rare alignment of Saturn and Pluto on the 12th of January, which was made bigger by Jupiter coming in shortly thereafter, which is the angle we looked at in our COVID astrology episode. While no one could have predicted how epic a catastrophe Corona could have been, hey, we did get at least one apocalyptic cataclysm, I guess. Many astrology charts predicted that this year would mark history by challenging us in some pretty extreme ways. According to Chani Nicholas, right from the very beginning, January's conjunction was a scary start as its episode coincided last time with both world wars and the economic recession of the eighties. So we were really in for it from the starting line, along with two Mercury retrogrades this year and the latter being during the next election. So it seems some more stuff is bound to go down before we're through the 2020 woods. But it's not all doom and gloom though given the position of Neptune, which suggests we're entering a time period where we feel more interconnected and understanding of each other than ever before. And with Venus's recent retrograde in Gemini, we have an energy of renewal and reassessment with relationships, both with others and ourselves. This is a time of apocalyptic matters. And if you recall from one of our flagship original spirit science episodes, apocalypse translates literally to a lifting of the veil. And so 2020 is a time where the truth is coming out. We're seeing clearly all of the chaos of human consciousness with crystal clear vision as truth comes to the surface in order for it to be healed. And even better though, 2021 is supposed to be great with the conjunction of Saturn and Pluto in Aquarius on the winter solstice at the very end of this year, we'll be entering a period of fresh start, especially in regards to science and innovation. Chani seems to think that the new energy will probably guide many industries to change in ways that make them practically unrecognizable. And some new and amazing concepts and innovations will be coming out in how we live in harmony with the earth and her resources. Maybe we'll even see the electric human black fly drone machine come to market. And I mean, hey, 
We might even start laying the groundwork for our first spirit center next year. And we've got some really big plans for that, but we'll have to save that discussion for another time. So if the 21st of June, 2020 wasn't the end of the world, did anything interesting happen on that day at all? Well, there wasn't anything as dramatic as tidal waves or volcanoes going off and blowing everything up all around it, but it was World Yoga Day and World Selfie Day and World Optimism Day and World Indigenous Peoples Day. Yay. And well, you get the picture. We made it into a lot of different things. Astronomically, it was pretty cool too. There was actually a solstice new moon solar eclipse in Cancer. Although only parts of Central and Eastern Africa and some parts of Southwest Asia could actually see the eclipse though, but still, someone somewhere probably thought the world was ending. And so long story short, is 2020 the new 2012? If we see 2012 as a time where the energy shifted and brought us into a new age, then kind of. A lot of what's going on at the moment in the world is dramatically shifting our cultural climate and collective consciousness. The riots especially have uprooted long held old systems of oppression and making way for new, more progressive energies and mindsets which is amazing. Is the world going to end at some point this year? Hmm, probably no more than it did in 2012. When a cycle ends, the calendar is meant to be a reset to the beginning and start all over. It's meant to be a time of change and renewal, which 2020 certainly is. Spiritually speaking, perhaps the new energies that got introduced to us in 2012 have finally integrated into our society and are shaking things up. And we're only just now feeling it. Just like in 2012, we are presented with a great opportunity. If 2020 is the actual 2012, well, then I can't wait for 2032. But in this present moment, let's rebirth some stuff for real this time. And if you need some help getting your cosmic rebirth on, allow me to share with you the seven day transformation. It only takes a week to completely shift your entire reality. Here's what someone else said after they went through it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.